With so much paranormal content flooding YouTube these days, it was only a matter of time before this platform became a catalyst for unexplained activity. While the intervening years have seen plenty of strange tales unfold online, a simple comment in late 2014 lit a firestorm of speculation and intrigue and set one man on a path which may have led him to his doom. Almost eight years ago, a user by the name of Snake Bite McGee left a comment on a YouTube video entitled Son of an Area 51 Technician. The user made a wild claim, saying that that ain't nothing. I'm a long distance hiker. One time, during one of my hikes out by Nellis Air Force Base, I found a hidden cavern. The entrance to the cave was shaped like a perfect capital M. I always enter every cave I find, but as I began to enter this particular cave, my whole body began to vibrate. The closer I got to the cave entrance, the worse the vibrating became. Suddenly, I became very scared and hightailed it out of there. That was one of the strangest things that has ever happened to me. In another comment, he added, I solo hike across mountaintops that most people wouldn't dare go. I have been in more caves than I can count. I play with rattlesnakes for fun, but this one particular cave was beyond anything I had ever encountered. Of course, such claims rarely go unchallenged on the internet. This wild story fueled curiosity and criticism in equal measure. After all, if the cave was close to this Air Force base, then the Nevada Test and Training Range was nearby. A unit of infamously known as the Area 51, where extraterrestrial craft are allegedly housed, reverse engineered or flight tested, depending on which story you believe. Some people said that Snake Bit McGee was full of it. Other commenters asked for proof, and still others, hopeful that the story was true, encouraged this Snake Bit McGee to set out in search of the cave once more, and to try and document his findings. And that is exactly what he did. The real name of Snake Bit McGee was Kenny Veach, an avid hiker. Those closest to Kenny described him as a happy, fun-loving character full of energy and a love for the outdoors that was simply infectious, particularly the area around his native Las Vegas. He seemed to appreciate the things about Nevada that others would overlook, returning from his excursions with little treasures, artifacts from abandoned ghost towns, weeds from the desolate scrubland or rocks, sand, and animal skulls from the desert, Kenny was well acquainted with the flora and fauna of the Southwest and showed plenty of respect for, but little fear of creatures like rattlesnakes. He was even comfortable enough to handle them in some of his videos. In fact, Kenny would pride himself on pushing the boundaries of safety in the wilderness, an arguably reckless degree. While sometimes accompanied by his girlfriend, Kenny would also hike alone for miles into areas where cell phone coverage was basically non-existent, spending as many as four nights in the desert. He rarely took a GPS or compass. As he wandered off trail, Kenny would test his own stamina, seeing how long he could go without using his supplies, eating and drinking the bare minimum. Describing his track record in YouTube comments, Kenny wrote this, I have been doing this sort of thing for over 20 years. I go where no one else goes, and I never take anyone with me. I find skulls of all shapes and sizes, and occasionally, I find really old animal traps. I hike over mountaintop after mountaintop and sleep on peaks under the stars. Sometimes, I have to scale giant cliffs to get myself out of a jam, but I always make it back. I'm beat up and tired, and my pack is almost always heavier than when I left. I had been rescued only one time by a chopper. I had blown up my left leg at the top of a mountain, and I only had a cup of water left to get me 20 miles back to my truck. It was also over 100 degrees out, so I have a very good safety record. According to Kenny, it was not uncommon for him to hike 15 to 20 miles just to get to a mountain that he wished to summit, then hike back out again. This was exactly the kind of outing that had led him to the mysterious M-shaped cavern in the first place. As Kenny later would explain, the cave was hidden somewhere in the Sheep Mountains, about an hour or so north of Las Vegas, near Gas Peak. After seeing the massive amount of interest that his comment had now generated, Kenny was excited to set out in search of the cave and even filmed his attempt. 
He posted the follow-up of his one-day hike on October 18th, 2014 in a video entitled M Cave Hike. In the opening moments, Kenny can be seen standing beside an abandoned vertical mine shaft in a canyon somewhere in the Mojave Desert. In the video, Kenny elaborates on his initial experience, saying, I'm looking for a cave that I found. I didn't have a sidearm when I was here before, and something about that cave just spooked me. Out of all the caves I've ever gone in, this one just made my body vibrate and resonate the closer I got to it. The crazier my body felt, and I was like, all right, I'm not going to go in there right now, but I'm coming back someday. I talked to some people on YouTube and told them, and they kind of called my hand on it. So hopefully I'll be able to find it. It's shaped like a big M. It's a big cave that looks just like a gigantic M, and it's about as tall as I am and kind of narrow, and it's stuck on the side of a mountain. Unlike the first time, Kenny carried his 9mm handgun on this trip, ready for whatever came his way. Unfortunately, despite his confidence, the search proved fruitless after the 10 hours of scouring the desert. Not only had the location in the cave eluded him, but Kenny wasn't able to uncover any useful clues of any sort either. This seemed to baffle him. I did not find the cave, he would say. That is so weird. I mean, I thought for sure I was just going to be able to find it. I remember it being fairly easy. Undaunted and encouraged by his fellow YouTubers, Kenny resolved to set out on a third time in search of this M-shaped cavern. One comment, chilling in retrospect, read this. No, do not go back there. If you find that cave entrance, don't go in. You won't go out. Kenny should have listened. Instead, he set off on his third trip in search of the M-shaped cave on November 10th, 2014. It would be the last hike he ever made. In Kenny's words, he only planned on a short overnight trip. However, he failed to return after two days, prompting his family and his girlfriend Sharon Pilgrim to contact the Las Vegas Police Department. Apparently, the search for Kenny began within a couple of days of the phone call and involved more than 30 search and rescue team members scouring the desert on foot. At least one helicopter flyover was deployed to search for any sign of Kenny or his belongings. His car was found immediately, exactly where his girlfriend said it would be parked. But all other signs of Kenny remained elusive. Eventually, on November 22nd, searchers happened upon the old mine shaft seen in the opening of Kenny's M Cave hike video, a four-hour hike from his car. There, sitting in the dust, was Kenny's cell phone. Red Rock and Search and Rescue Commander Dave Cummings told reporters that they found his cell phone close to a very old vertical mine shaft and they can't find another trail. It doesn't mean that he's down the mine shaft, but we have tracked him as far as we can. We are having our other crews come in from other search areas. All other attempts at locating Kenny were just simply dead ends. It was as if he had simply vanished into thin air. What could have happened to him? Over the past few years, people have proposed a variety of possible scenarios ranging from the mundane to the supernatural. The first and most obvious is that an accident befell Kenny. The sheep range is full of rugged terrain, and while Kenny was a seasoned hiker, anyone can fall prey to the ever-changing circumstances of the wilderness. Perhaps he did wind up in the mine shaft or became dehydrated and wandered into a cave, maybe even the M-shaped cave. But why would he leave his cell phone behind? Others think that Kenny Veach deliberately disappeared and that he still lives off the grid somewhere today. At the same time, it's hard to imagine how Kenny could possibly remain hidden in 2022, especially given the high-profile nature of his disappearance. Simply put, for nearly a decade, a lot of people have looked for Kenny Beach, and no one has found him. Kenny also seems to have been well-loved. He left behind a daughter and a girlfriend and was gaining a lot of attention online, which he could have perhaps eventually monetized. So, why leave all that behind? Tragically, there is some indication that he may have taken his own life. After his personal effects were recovered, someone claiming to be Sharon Pilgrim left a comment on Kenny M's cave hike video, writing this, We explored many caves and mine shafts. We were always careful how we explore them, but Kenny was a bit more daring than I was. We were snake guards, sun-protected clothing, used walking sticks, brought enough water and food for the hiking hours, and had extra water slash food in the car. 
I want you to know that I do not think Kenny had an accident. I believe he committed suicide. He had battled depression for many years and would not take medication or see a doctor. The outdoors was his medication. He quit his job a little more than a year before he had disappeared. So if Kenny's girlfriend indeed is the person behind this comment, then sadly, the theory seems especially likely. After all, Kenny failed to take his video equipment with him that day, suggesting that he had no intention of filming his hike. An odd oversight if he hoped to relocate the M-shaped cavern. Still, given the nature of what he was looking for, some perceive the fingerprints of the paranormal on Kenny Beach's disappearance. If he died, either deliberately or by accident, we are left simply scratching our heads at the absence of a body. Is it possible that he found and entered the M-shaped cave, but as the YouTube commenter warned him, never came out again? If so, what could have been inside? One popular idea suggests that whatever phenomenon lies behind the missing 411 cases took Kenny. Given the utter lack of a body, this seems possible, but what is responsible for missing 411 disappearances in the first place? Missing 411 cases are almost like paranormal Rorschach tests. Whatever your favorite topic is, you can find a way to make it fit most examples, whether it's government conspiracies, UFOs, Bigfoot, or anything else. However, some possibilities seem stronger than others. For example, there doesn't seem to be a ton of Bigfoot cases in the sheep range. So, while we can't rule it out for certain, Kenny's abduction by a large hairy hominid, given the M-shaped cave's proximity to Area 51, the most popular answer is that Kenny's disappearance has something to do with extraterrestrials or the United States government's interest in UFOs. Strange lights and structured craft are regularly seen in the skies above the Mojave. Some will tell you that these are indeed alien spacecraft, while others will tell you that they are simply terrestrial aircraft or even a combination of the two, perhaps experimental vehicles built by the United States government, reverse engineering from crashed UFOs. These sightings occur not only in the vicinity of the Air Force Base, but also above the Sheep Mountains specifically, the same location where Kenny vanished. On October 19th, 2011, five eyewitnesses in Las Vegas, among them municipal management employees and mid-level casino executives, watched 25 small disks fly east in the direction of the Sheep Range. Each was black with a yellow or red dome on top and traveled quickly enough to appear as blurs in the night sky whenever they moved. For around 12 minutes, the witnesses watched this display unfold, but reported no sound whatsoever. More recently, another witness claimed that they watched a cigar-shaped craft move south to north, directly towards the Sheep Mountains on October 10, 2020. Over the course of four minutes, the craft alternated between a bright, shiny silver and dark color, then back again before disappearing out of sight. It seems noteworthy that both of these sightings took place around the same time of year that Kenny disappeared. Perhaps such sightings are seasonal. Beyond these dramatic reports, other people regularly see anomalous lights flitting along the sheep range. Three witnesses claim that they once watched as lights moved up these slopes near Gas Peak in a ridiculously fast pattern. After discussing their sighting among themselves, they called the Air Force Base, but apparently the only answer they received from authorities was two words. We know. The telephone operator at the base hung up on them within 10 seconds of receiving their call. According to the officials, most of the lights seen in the sheep range are simply reflections from solar panels. And in 1986, Sergeant William Miner installed a solar-powered radio signal tower at the top of Gas Peak, which sits around 7,000 feet above the desert floor. Now, according to Miner, every year since 1986, We've been getting these calls, but they are always explained away. Miner claims that various times of year catch the sunlight at different angles, which can send reflections back down into the city below. These solar panels might certainly be responsible for some sightings, even lights, but move might be attributed to light waves distorted by the desert heat, or witnesses themselves moving, but certainly can't account for all the UFO sightings in the area. 
Was Kenny abducted by aliens or was he simply in the wrong place at the wrong time? Some think that Kenny discovered a secret entrance to Area 51 and was silenced by the United States government. The strange, unsettling vibrations that Kenny felt could have been a security measure to keep people out of an underground facility. Or side effects of extraterrestrial technology. These ideas, of course, find precedent in older folklore. Creatures of all sorts have been long rumored to live underground, from fairies and dwarfs in medieval Europe to extraterrestrials and crypto-terrestrials, and cryptids in the modern era. Strange noises and sensations emerging from underground are actually surprisingly common. Reported at such paranormal hotspots as Utah's Skinwalker Ranch and Washington's own Yakima Indian Reservation, in such places, witnesses often report other phenomena alongside sounds of underground machinery, from poltergeist activity and shadow people to cryptid reports and regular UFO sightings, including both structured craft and orbs of light. Remember that Kenny was unable to relocate the M-shaped cave. He seemed especially baffled at this seeing as he had a pretty good idea of where it should have been. This detail brings to mind countless similar examples from myth and legend where portals to other worlds were only accessible at certain times of year, where the veil between worlds thinned. Revisiting the same spot any other time of year, you might only find a simple cave rather than an entrance to a fairyland or another dimension. Was something similar happening when Kenny failed to find the M-shaped cavern, a symbolic clue might lie in the configuration of the entrance itself. The M shape is identical to the Elder Futhark Ethwa's rune, which means horse. This might not seem especially significant until one considers the spiritual role that horses once served in countless cultures across the world. Anthropologists have long noted that many indigenous societies used horses to symbolize transitions into the other world and the afterlife places which are sometimes interpreted as realms literally beneath the earth, accessible through caves and other caverns. In cultures which relate to the spirit world through shamans, spirit horses are often the mode of transportation by which the higher and lower realms are accessed. In fact, shamanic cultures like Northern Scandinavia's Sami refer to the Ethwa's rune as the shaman's horse and believe that the shamans can symbolically ride this M shape into other worlds. In other words, if only at a symbolic level, the shape of Kenny Beach's cave clearly indicates passage into another realm, one which our predecessors might have described as the spirit world. Today, we might as easily call it another dimension. One idea that few people have explored is whether or not Kenny Beach might have been the victim of some sort of occult sacrifice or even a spirit summoned from beyond. Assuming that the M-shaped cave lies somewhere in the shadow of Gas Peak, a temple to the lion-headed Egyptian goddess Sekhmet lies merely 33 miles away as the crow flies. As anyone who lives in the southwest will tell you, this is practically next door. While the temple's owner and those who frequent it seemed kind and open enough about their practice, it is an odd coincidence. The modest structure of Sekhmet Temple was built in 93 and houses a statue of the goddess herself. It is open to the elements and host meetings of Wiccans from Las Vegas, as well as spiritual, environmental, and meditation events. Despite the overall positivity the temple and its founders embrace, its presence alone raises a lot of questions. Most importantly, it seems to suggest that, beyond UFOs, there must be other arcane powers in the vicinity of the Sheep Range. Historically speaking, pagan temples are rarely erected randomly. Sites are specifically chosen, sometimes falling upon ley lines, but always imbued with mystical energy. According to the owner, the site of the temple is powerful for many reasons. Built on the very edge of the Nevada test site, it is also three miles west of Indian Springs, which houses an Air Force base, and about eight miles from a federal prison. About 45 miles more traveling will get you to the suburban outskirts of Las Vegas. One gets the distinct impression that the oppressive forces responsible for the test site are uncomfortable with Sekhmet's proximity. With seemingly ill will, Anti-tank helicopters called warthogs and jets will fly low over Cactus Springs on their practice flights, momentarily disturbing the silence. You can watch them buzz the tiny temple, which is set back from the highway about a thousand feet. 
the Sekhmet Temple founder also admits that, alongside these positive vibes, the temple holds its ground in the midst of many negative energies. Could these energies have somehow contributed to Kenny Beach's disappearance? Could misguided practitioners drawing upon these dark forces have taken Kenny for a sacrifice? If not from humans, could Kenny have met his end at the direct intervention of these powers? Perhaps even Sekhmet himself. While sometimes a loving mother figure, Sekhmet has a darker side as the bearer of pharaohs to the afterlife. She was not to be trifled with and could prove to be a ruthless foe if crossed. A warrior goddess who famously fed upon her enemy's blood and fear. In fact, some Egyptians even called her the bloodthirsty, for she once nearly vanquished all of humankind in her unquenchable thirst. Her other names included titles like the Mistress of Dread and the Lady of Slaughter and the Mauler or She Before Whom Evil Trembles. Like many other ancient deities, she could only be satisfied by animal sacrifices and, if displeased, spread pestilence and wrath. Perhaps she was unhappy that fateful November day when Kenny Beach set off into the Mojave Desert. Will the M-shaped cave ever be found? On June 6, 2021, the YouTube channel Exploring Abandoned Mines and Unusual Places posted a video which might feature the M-shaped cave. The footage, taken just off of Nevada's famous extraterrestrial highway, shows a roughly M-shaped crevice in close proximity to Area 51. The opening leans strongly to the right, like a heavily italicized uppercase M, and has clearly hosted human visitors, evidenced by a short wall of stacked stones, wooden boards, and an old empty bottle discovered within. The creator of the YouTube video even found a discarded metal sign inside reading, Area 51, Warning, Restricted Area, No Trespassing, Use of Deadly Force Authorized. According to the uploader, the location was revealed to him by an officer in the military who had been searching for Kenny's cave himself. However, it is incredibly shallow. You could easily see the back wall from the entrance. This has led some to speculate that the cave, if it is indeed the same one Kenny found, was deliberately sealed by authorities. We may never know what happened to Kenny Beach as he set off for the final time into the Sheep Range. Was he plucked out of existence by supernatural forces? Or did he wander into another dimension or slip back in time? Or did he simply feel hopeless and was desperate to escape his suffering? This last possibility is both the most likely and, frankly, the most terrifying. Behind his happy demeanor was a man likely in unfathomable pain. But more importantly, what do you guys think? Is it really just as simple as Kenny taking himself out due to lifelong depression? Or was Kenny taken by dark supernatural forces never to be seen again? I'll let you guys decide. And if you guys enjoy this video, be sure to go ahead and smack that like button. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to go ahead and hit that big old red subscribe button and keep your notifications turned on. As always, guys, I love you all. Keep an open mind, and I'll see you guys in the very next video.